Hello, and um, thank you for attending this webinar. Uh, today, we'll discuss about securing tomorrow, uh, empowering APEC with innovative physical security solutions. All right, let's uh, move to the next slide. Yeah. I'm Yamazaki from the Arvan department at Zenike uh, Corporation. I'm responsible for the planning and implementation of Skylar solutions in Zenike. Zenike is one of the oldest uh, guarding companies in Japan, and we are an official Skylar partner in Japan. Next slide, please. Over the 50 years, uh, we have expanded our business uh, with a focus on facility security, stationing security, uh, airports, railways, gas, and large-scale shopping malls. Japan is one of the safest countries to travel to. Uh, on the other hand, there was a time uh, in Japan when it was said that uh, water and safety were free. And consequently, not much investment has been made in safety or security. For Japan, the video analysis and surveillance, uh, surveillance services provided by Skyra are cutting edge and the market has yet to catch up with this technology. That's why Skyra is important for the Japanese market. Please move on next slide. Okay, thank you. Despite Japan uh, being a safe country, the decrease in birth rates and the aging population are steadily reducing the number of people who can become security guards. It's projected uh, that uh, the workforce will have in the long term. At a glance, uh, the, this reduction may seem gradual, uh, but the actual labor shortage affects those in low paid positions uh, first and foremost. Security guards uh, whose salary levels are by no means high are currently facing a severe shortage. As a result, keeping secure through means other than the actual deployment of manpower has become an urgent market. However, human tasks are not so simple that they can be easily replaced by a, a few types of video recognition. I worked as a security manager at the airport for more than 10 years and know how difficult it is. The, actually, there are many companies in Japan that provide video recognition, but uh, not many that have proven successful. You often see solutions that seem to have been created just for demonstration purposes. However, Scala is an exception. Scala's mission is to bring AI closer to the private security industry and enhance accessibility. Its AI model is developed by learning real security incidents. Actually, the safe country don't have enough incidents, incident videos to feed AI. So you can prepare the incidents that you have uh, never seen by using Scala. So quality is a given, you'll see it uh, during Alice's presentation. Scala has a broad array of solutions that are prepared to maintain safe, safety quality with a strong focus on how high quality AI can be used to improve of operational efficiency and return on investment. For example, Scala is dedicated to keep number of alarms within operators monitor, uh, monitoring capacity. Today, I'm delighted to introduce you to Skylar's excellent solutions. Now, I'll give a word to Ara so he can demonstrate for you to the power of Skylar's technology and share what differentiates them uh, from other solutions. Ara, please. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for, for introduction. Uh, okay, so yeah, I am Ara Gazarian. Uh, I am a VP of AI and technical co-founder of uh, in of Skyla, uh, well, and um, now I'm going to uh, present you some of the at least some of the solutions uh, of Skyla. The scope of this webinar, uh, actually the timeline, is 30 minutes or so. Uh, what we are going to do now, I'm going to present them, and then at the end we will have Q and A session. So I'm, uh, I'll be happy to answer your possible accumulated questions. But what I would also encourage uh, you, to, if uh, you are interested in any of the products or, or solutions that I will present, please uh, do not hesitate, go and visit our website. It has explicit and, and wide information 
uh, not in, in also the, the further steps guide. So what you have to do, how to contact us, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So everything is is in there with all the materials. But uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to focus on some of the solutions. If I have to name a number of solutions that Skyla is providing, I would say something around, let's say, 15 solidly separated. And of course, I will not be able to go through um, all of them. Uh, each one of them, I think, deserves a separate webinar. But we have selected some like four or five of uh, main ones that are interested for your uh, particular market, for, for APAC, etc. So what, uh, and first of all, what are we going to talk about? It's it's about AI, artificial intelligence, and uh, and and why it is here, why it is booming, why it's hype in 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 the um, in in everywhere in the, in life, in media, and everything. So first of all, of course, uh, that there was a dramatic shift recently. Um, AI was there for well almost like half a century or something, I would say. But uh, recent deca decades with all these uh, hardware uh, innovations, etc., enabled the usage of AI for general consumer. <clears throat> and um, the main line that I would put for AI is that it's, uh, yes, of course, it can some, in some cases, you can substitute uh, human, but the main goal is uh, that it will augment. So it will in, in increase, it will, uh, the cap capacity, capability of human, uh, but and uh, it will as well allow to uh, implement some new ideas, new solutions that would be otherwise impossible for a human being. So it's, a, it's really a, a technology that you will and you should not try to avoid, but add, uh, but grasp and use as soon as possible. So, uh, and, and again, adoption of AI is not is not a question, is not optional. The sooner you, you or your company will adopt it, the better and and faster will be the growth and all the benefits that it brings. Uh, to get uh, with it. So first of all, of course, it's uh, as well labor savings because uh, yes, one man can, one uh, supervisor uh, of the video management system can watch what six, maybe eight monitors at the same time with of course reduced accu uh, accuracy and attention. But you would be surprised uh, how the attention of a supervisor deteriorates with the time. It's not only the number of people that uh, Katsura mentioned, it, it goes down and, and we, you will be not be able to find appropriate number of people and sit them in front of appropriate number of monitors and arrange all these things. It's also the fact that each and every supervisor with the time, these officers, they lose their attention. It's a proven fact, and there are researches that shows that the attention span within an hour or two drops down 20%, from 100 to 20%. So AI is there to help, to augment, to, uh, to bring the quality back to, to the expected, because we are talking about security. You don't want security of your premises, your business, your operation to be impaired even 1%. And let's imagine it goes down 80% and or with the time 10 times or something, right? So now we have selected some of the solutions again for the sake of time. Uh, and yes, I will start with, uh, with the very basic one. It's, it's called false alarm filtering. It, it, it will explain you if you have any questions remain from why AI, why, why do we need that? It will explain you why you need, but uh, as a synopsis, okay, we'll, we'll go through false alarm filtering. I'll talk about face recognition. Then we will talk briefly about anomaly detection. And that's a very special and, and uh, in a way, different solution that we have. Then traffic flow analysis is one of the youngest and, and most powerful analysis tools. I will, I will show uh, some demos there. And then I will end up with uh, Skylar VMS, video management. So first of all, false alarm filtering. 
we are going to talk, there are different ways to monitor the premises for intruders and, and, uh, uh, and protect your uh, perimeter. But we are going to talk about monitoring centers and monitoring services and, and service providers. So basically, yeah, you have tons of cameras. I know, especially within Japan, there are huge number of cameras. And uh, this is an example of a typical installation. There are 67 sites. There are 568 cameras in these sites. And what these cameras are doing, they are detecting motion and they are sending this motion as an al possible alarm to the monitoring center. And the guys sitting there would look and de define if it's a motion of a leaf on the tree, if it's a dog crossing the street, or it's an intruder entering the, the premises or jumping through uh, above the fence. So this number of these uh, alarms, that possible alarms that are sent is tremendous. So this number, 2,016,000, so, uh, so this is a number of thousands. So 2 million alarms were sent in uh, two weeks, uh, slightly more than two weeks time. And these 2 million alarms have to be, each and every one has to be verified, checked. And if it is a true alarm, then actions taken. If it's not, then it's not. So, well, uh, why th th that's where you need AI. Because again, either you hire an army of people and you force them to look at the screen 24 seven, et cetera, and not blink, not, not sleep, not uh, go away or I don't know, have a lunch, or you apply an, a smart uh, solution, AI, like Skyla, and that will do most of the job for you. So Skyla will filter more than 99% away from this number. So if, for example, daily number would be um, well, something like 100,000, then you filter it to 1,000. And that is all already something that can be watchable, okay? So uh, again, these are the, the, some examples of uh, how much Skyla has um, uh, filtered out. From 2 million, there are only 18,000 left. Okay. So, and, and the negative effect of these false alarms is in a way obvious, but I will still go through. So, of course, it brings a fatigue. Yeah, guys, well, 2 million, it's a huge number. And anyone staring at the screen and finding where the, is this is this a person no it's a dog or is this a person no it's a fly on the on the camera so they will of course get uh, tired of this routine by the time and then they will start missing the 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 emergency and very critical important events that you really really don't want to miss and of course, if you want don't, don't want that you have to hire more people so the, the shift is shorter the uh, the screens are more and people are watching less. And that's an extra cost. As opposed to that, you can as well imply, apply Skyla and minimize your cost. So why Skyla? Um, maybe you already know there are some, as Estatero said, there are other solutions that are in the market and they provide similar solutions, I would say. But what I love to see anytime any potential client uh, asks for a POC or, or a test, what I love to see is one-to-one -one comparison. We love them. We love when you put Skyla and you put something that you found in the market or a camera or something next to each other and test at the same time on the same scenery. These type of tests answer any type of questions. So, but to highlight what we, what, what is important, I mean, what is the differentiator? Yes, Skyla sees very tiny subjects, very tiny movements in very, very far. For human eye to do that, you have to zoom in. But how fast can you zoom in in a, in a, in a video? Well, once in five seconds, 10, if you really, really do it uh, all the time. And uh, Skyla does it with a blink of eye. It does it every second frame or something. So if we zoom in, we check, 
we go in very tiny detail. And again, to verify that this is a person, you need to zoom 10 times. And, uh, and Skyla does it automatically on a background. So again, this is, for example, uh, I will, uh, this is an example of um, object detection uh, camera the, with, the, with the analytics on, in the camera that you might have. Nowadays, every second uh, smart camera provides object detection embedded. And you say, okay, well, it has it. Why do I need extra analytics on top? You will get what it is shown on the right if you apply the camera analytics. So everything is detected, except sometimes the, even the proper person is not detected. And you get huge number of alarms. You really, if, if you are a consumer or you're a business owner, you really don't want to be bothered 20 times uh, in, during the night just because there was a flash of a car light in, in your screen, right? In your, in your camera. So, um, yeah, so I, I hope uh, applying false, false alarm filtering and the reason for that in, in general in AI is obvious enough. If there are any questions, I will uh, answer them at the end uh, of, the, of the webinar. But again, so the differentiators, of course, first of all, uh, is a superb accuracy. That's, that's the one of the main, if not the main, uh, goal that we have aimed at uh, when we were developing Skyla some years ago. And now, uh, definitely, any one-to-one -one comparison with any, let's say, rival or, or competitor or alternative that you find in the market, we really welcome that. You will be pleasantly surprised, and we don't need any marketing or, or you know, advertisement or anything just please do the do the tests one to one and also you feel free to compare pricing and some things that you want uh, yeah I, I will talk about uh, some of the advantages later also when i cover other solutions so next solution will be face recognition i have outlined some of the directions or or flavors of face recognition that we have uh, we are proposing. It will start from the basic watch list. You add some faces and you get alar alarms when, when these people is, are detected on your cameras. Then, uh, of course, uh, it can be integrated to your uh, access control solution. So we have uh, even two-factor authentication solutions uh, integration. So for example, a person comes, he uses a magnetic key, but also it is verified by the face recognition that it's this particular person. So they cannot change the magnetic key and another person cannot enter. So this is also uh, some uh, an, an existing and operating in some uh, hard, like extended factory settings, et cetera, solution. And then we have one very uh, unique, uh, there are no, at least I haven't seen any uh, proper alternative in the market. Uh, we call it auto enrollment. What it allows is that what it, I, I will show you briefly. Um, uh, it will uh, it provides you well. Face recognition operates on your servers. It detects every person that is passing through the camera, and it records the face. So not the not the, the appearance, but it records that this person was. It enrolls the person into the database. So what what can you do with this with this data? First of all, there are a number of um, analytics you can apply to this uh, solution. For example, you can check how many times a person have and came, came back to your to your shop to your business, and then you can also uh, make a VIP customer. If, for example, if he comes back more than five times, you can select that out, and you will even with not knowing this person name or identity, with no database, with no privacy infringements or anything, you will know. You will still know that there. These are these are the persons that visit you the most, and also that will allow you in some cases to find suspicious cases. If there are people are not supposed to visit you that many times, but they're always in, in, in uh, uh, premises, then you can also select that out. So there are many, many usages of uh, auto-enrollment use uh, this use case, and this uh, really deserves a separate webinar. We will do shortly 
very soon. But uh, just for your information, yes, there is this very advanced, uh, precise, uh, and, and uh, cool in many ways uh, solution. And also, uh, I, I put forensic here because uh, auto enrollment can also allow you to forensically find this person, uh, upload the, uh, the picture, and then find forensically. Uh, how many times this particular and what date, day, time, etc. This particular person was detected in your in your cameras. So yeah, and face recognition. Um, well, this is okay. So face recognition is uh, based on uh, state of the art, uh, our proprietary analytics. And uh, these are some metrics for uh, those of you who are aware of. Uh, uh, the AI itself and computer vision, et cetera, they would uh, know what this um, metrics uh, stand for. But for, for the rest, these are really high numbers. <laughs> these are really, these are like st standard tests and these numbers are really high. And uh, uh, there's a uh, addition to face recognition, appearance-based person search, which will uh, not take only the face, but the appear overall appearance. I will talk about it later when I will uh, present you traffic flow analysis. So uh, yeah, and uh, next solution, again, as you can see, I'm briefly jumping from one to the other for the sake of time. And uh, yeah, uh, if, uh, if I had the freedom, each one of them will deserve, again, separate webinar. But so anomaly detection and behavior recognition. This one stands out from uh, the rest of the solutions because this is based on the action. And there are not so many action detection solutions in the market. And most of them, if not all of them, are uh, working with key points. So they detect where the person's hands are, feet are, head, and then they analyze the movement based on these key points. It's a good, in a way, it's a good approach, but there is a huge limitation. It is not possible usually to scale that properly. The reason for that is that you can develop this solution for one person and deploy it for one person or two person. But God forbid, if there are three person, four, etc., linearly, the thing will go berserk. So the, your system will stop working if there are more people than you usually count it for. And alternatively, you have to deploy a solution for, I don't know, 30 person in a view regardless if they, there is just one or two passing. And that is a very huge bottleneck because the hardware cost uh, skyrockets. What we are doing is very different. We are analyzing the scene for anomalies, for particular anomalies. And when I'm saying anomaly, just not don't think that anything will trigger or like a light flashing will trigger. No, when we are trying to, let's say, are claiming to detect fight, we are detecting fight. We're not detecting dancing people. We're not detecting running people. We're detecting fighting people. And when we claim we detect, for example, uh, suspicious shopping behavior, we don't like to call it shoplifting, but it's close to it. It's like kind of a synonym of shoplifting because, well, you, you cannot call it shoplifting if you don't prove it, right? But we do detect people in shops when they put something in the bag. And this small, subtle uh, action, very short, split of a second, someone takes from the, show, from the shelf something and puts in a bag, we can detect that. So, and yes, fight, uh, vandalism, like hitting things and etc. I have a video I will, I will show you shortly. We can detect that as well. So just an example of uh, vandalism detection here. Uh, just a uh, kid probably playing around, but so yeah, uh, this type of actions they are being detected by uh, by uh, action detection module. Again, uh, there can be two people fighting, uh, or one person hitting something, ATM or or. I don't know, shop uh, screen or something, and we will be able to detect that. Skyla will detect that, and you will get it in your dashboard immediately within uh, 
one second or less than one second. So, and uh, the fourth solution, I this, this young and huge and big and very fancy, nice solution I want to talk about is traffic flow analysis. And uh, yeah, and, and it is together with appearance-based person search. I will go briefly through it again, briefly, unfortunately, because it, it will take hours. But then, yes, what is it for? First of all, it is for what it is titled, traffic flow analysis. It detects and analyzes traffic of people and or vehicles. So it detects each and every person, tracks them, and that allows us not only to get, the, let's say, map of people walking around and, and directions of these moves, but also uh, duration, for example, dwell time. And then it allows you to do all sorts of analytics on top. For example, you can um, get uh, loitering alerts, or you can, it, it, there are many, many use cases. I will go through some of the results you get and why, and then I will try to uh, um, you know, explain you why you need this type of results. So for example, yes, real-time people count. You can have zones and uh, real time you will see how many people in each zone and of course compare this is and not only compare one zone to the other but also compare in the time so you have rush hours peak hours etc you can have alerts like if there are more than this time number of people let me know and i will send the second cashier so the queue is not that long for example then you have heat maps yeah well with heat maps, it's I will I will explain you why you need it if you don't know why you need a heat map. Pathway analysis, you get all these main directional lines. So you, you get an arrow that shows how people pass through your setting mainly. Line crossing, well, you have a cross line and you count people in, out, or you make a tripwire and you get an alert any moment someone crosses the, the, the line. So this allows you also to count occupation in your, in your shop, people entering and exiting. And also you can as well get the high uh, heat rush hours when people are coming and going mostly. Dwell time analysis, how, may, how much time people spend in this particular area, versus the other, at what time of the day they are lingering somewhere, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, all of this they are being analyzed on the very nice, and uh, I will show the dashboard, and uh, and then you get all sorts of insight from this information. So yeah, uh, as an example, the sales floor, you get heat maps where people are spending most of their times, you get arrows, directions, people passing, et cetera, et cetera. And um, actually, I want to I want to switch to um, to show you in this is a okay. Well, it's kind of a, a one, one setting, one camera analysis uh, of uh, people passing by in a in, it's a shop or something. And then what you get is um, this is the dashboard. It's a business intelligent smart dashboard. This is highly customizable not only you can change and add new types of analytics graphs and everything but also you can change the the, the appearance the aggregation time the duration at which you want to get this information you can get some you can specify the date and time etc etc what you will get here you will get as, as i said already you you can get um, a visitor count um durations uh, well, this is just three hours. And then you get number of visitors in zones that you have, we possibly have several cashiers, several zones. You can have uh, gender and age distribution of your visitors. So for example, more males, or females, etc. And then of course, as I said, you can, if it's not one camera, but several, you can compare. You can compare one cashier to the other, the one line in front of cashier to the other, how much people, how many people are standing in one line, how long they standing in the line, and and then during the day, what is the um, queue formation trend tendencies, etc. And the same with cross lines, you have you can see um, that there's there are two cross lines here, and people are passing 
uh, back and forth and you can you can see and of course the heat maps this one is for all the areas so of course the sailors get uh, the, the, the service people get the uh, higher heat maps but this one is um, this one is for customers so you get this particular area for some reason people are uh, maybe it's a payment area so yeah this is this is how it looks again you can add uh, on top of this uh, new new graphs new analytics and and you can export this in a very nice uh, nice way uh, yeah, while here, I will also go and briefly show you face recognition. Sorry about this back and forth. Uh, this is one of the offices. So you get, uh, this is the auto enrollment faces. So you get the, you get the faces angled and, and not looking at the camera, etc. People are passing and they are just detecting detected and as you can see they are detected as the same person we don't know the name of this person it is uh, we we haven't added him into the into the database but at least the system understands that it's the same person so we know uh, the system was mentioned at this time then uh, 34 then 40 etc cetera, etc cetera. so this is the auto enrollment in action okay so now i will go back to the presentation oops Okay, so traffic flow analysis features very nice uh, addition to that, I would say. Actually, this is a very huge addition. It deserves to be a separate product, but, but well, it goes along. And uh, it's called attribute search. And it is, uh, well, you, it is, well, for, for what it stays for. So for, you, have, you want to search for people uh, based on the attribute. Again, I, to show it, it will take too long, but just for the moment, I will just briefly explain what it is for and then play, please stay tuned and we will do another webinar for traffic flow analysis separately because it is a huge product with all these branchings and everything. But yes, you can select uh, the age of the person, then you can select uh, the gender, and then you can select the, um, the color of the top and bottom, and you can select, for example, a short sleeve or the person is wearing shorts. And then what will happen, the system will select out uh, this, this particular people from all the crowd. And then this will allow you to find the particular person fast enough. Previously, we had this person search, very nicely working person search, which worked the way that you have to upload a photo of the person, maybe face is not visible, just the appearance of the person, and it will search and find this person in a crowd. But the problem is that usually you don't have the photo. For example, someone robs your 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 shop and runs in the in the mall, and you want to find this person in all the cameras of the mall. Before you will find the photo of the person and upload to the system, the guy will be gone. But as a post, you can run into the system and go and and say, okay, show me a person wearing a hat with a blue jacket and red trousers. And then it will show you all the people that correspond to this uh, uh, explanation. And then you can quickly find the person of, of, of your interest. So this is very, very uh, useful for um, person search. And for like, say, let's say for example, lost child. In, uh, we have this setting uh, deployed in number of stadiums and uh, it, is work, it works as, especially for this reason. You have a child lost, you don't have the photo. And the problem is that you have to have the photo of that particular day. That kid is wearing those particular clothes, not from yesterday or the 10 years ago or something. So you, and that's very hard to, to provide. But yes, if you come and say, my child was wearing yellow jacket and green trousers, there you go. This is it. So uh, again, what else TFA will, can, can help you with? Uh, heat maps. Uh, will help you, for example, to optimize number of things. For example, advertisement positions, the place uh, POC, POS displays somewhere, and um, and and or or even like cleaning, uh, where to clean mostly. For example, you know this this is a place where people dwell mostly. So please pay a certain attention cleaning personal. Please pay certain attention to this area. It's just an example, right? So, uh, and also uh, choke points, if there are some traffic 
coins where people are you know standing just because there's too many of them etc we can as well define that with heat maps and uh, yeah uh, climate control so you can uh, control your ac accordingly where people stand so you have a cuff restaurant or something and you can check where people are spending their time mostly and accumulate to these areas make them maybe nicer greener or or whatever so heat maps are very very useful in general and skylight heat map is based on query so you just you query a certain area and uh, you get the heat map uh, from that area and there are a number of ways of heat maps uh, that uh, skylight is, is giving so one of them is based on the timing the other one is based on on movements etc so it's it's complicated in a, in a way so i will i will not go into details that's a separate story so uh, and and it's again you can optimize the uh, the shops based on the air, on the pathways on the heat maps on dwell times etc etc so this is a it's just a very brief and short and uh, in a way uh, well, minimalistic, conservative explanation why you would need it. But rush hours, hit, uh, peak, peak hours, and uh, all sorts of alerts possible, like loitering uh, alerts, etc. This is all, this goes all into traffic flow analysis. And lastly, um, I, I will go through um, uh, the, of course, this is like, it comes without saying that if you have a, surveillance system cctv system you need a video management system so what does it do uh, i think uh, any of them uh, any of you who has uh, actually or deal with cameras you know you have to record the recording of the camera rarely they do it on the camera it's not very convenient then you need a video management system and yes there are a number of them in the market but uh, what skyla would offer you first of all of course uh, straight and uh, easy integration with analytics. That's one of the top uh, reasons I, I would outline. Y you saw all the analytics. You didn't see the rest of analytics. Uh, it's it's really big number. It's a smoke. There's smoke alarm filtering. There's a sleep and fall detection. Um, and there's a there are a number of different solutions out there. So all of them are perfectly integrated with video management solution that we are providing of course it does everything that you probably would expect from such a system it does recordings it does uh, you can export the videos you can cut trim do all sorts of manipulate manipulations and add cameras into the system very easily uh, all uh, diff the, there are different uh, variants that the Skylar VMS comes with, with uh, starting from a basic one, standalone in one particular play, place, and ending with a multi site uh, corporate, uh, which provides you a number of uh, uh, tools and, and features that uh, extremely flexible and, and uh, that are really, really helpful. When you start using it, you will, you will understand what what this is for. So uh, just a brief chart of, uh, let's say, variants of the, uh, of the, so it's, uh, okay, wait, sorry. So this first one, uh, this is off, doesn't show you, but yes, it's a single server, the free version, it's a different licensing, right? So it starts from a single server and adds with a corporate which allows you all sorts of uh, uh, things. And there's an unlimited number of uh, devices that you can connect, unlimited number of uh, recording servers that you can connect, et cetera, et cetera. And also it has the smart map function, the, the, the corporate one, and allows you to do database encryption for security, et cetera. So a lot of cool, nice features. VMS goes with, and the dashboard looks like this. Again, VMS deserves certainly deserves a certain se separate uh, webinar for that. But I'm just uh, briefly, you know, this is a sneak peek. Consider this as a sneak peek that 
is bound to interest you. And then you go in and say, okay, I'm interested in this. And then you get more information, right? So uh, yeah, what is the, the difference in general? Why Skylo? Just for your information, AI that we are using is our own proprietary. Usually, I would say maybe 98% of the market is using some open source computer vision platform. You can download it in your own computer at home. You can provide it with some set of images. Maybe you can even buy some images and add that on top. And then you will train it and you will have something working. But that's the problem uh, what very Katsura mentioned in the very beginning. And that's why I'm saying I love this comparison one-to-one -one because that's when the difference shows up for itself. You put the uh, two systems next to each other and you understand. The problem is the falseness. False negatives, the misses, you really don't want them. It's, it's the, the nightmare. Missing something that you were supposed to detect, missing an intruder, missing, a, God forbid, missing a weapon. We also have this weapon detection solution. That's something, let's say, unforgettable, right? And that's what we call false negatives. And anything we develop is to uh, eliminate this possibility of this. And also false positives, of course, is nagging, annoying, wrong alerts that you get every once in a while. There's a bird flying through your camera and you get an alert and then there's a fly or spider in front and you get an alert, et cetera. This is annoying and we do everything to minimize those. So performance accuracy uh, is in the top list that we are watch for, okay? So, and of course, uh, it, Skylar and solutions that we provide are bound to minimize your ROIs. It's definitely, that's how it's working. You get less, you need less people Unfortunately for them, probably, but fortunately for you owning a business, you need less people to maintain the more number of cameras. So you had something in your mind, multiply it, multiply it probably by 10, 20, sometimes 100 times, because yes, one person should not sit and look at all 200 cameras for a child. He just needs, you. how many people you would need to look for a child in 200 cameras? 20, maybe 25. You need one person and Skyla for that, right? One person, Skyla watching for the child and one person seeing if this is the same, is this is the child he looks for or not. That's that's the, the difference of the, of the roles, let's say. And then, uh, yeah, we have global presence, as apparently uh, you, you can see. Our support, exceptional. Uh, we always get compliments for that. We always get um, some, some, some of our clients bluntly say, we are with you because of your support, right? And of course, value, not only the, for the products, but also for the hardware. The hardware cost uh, is much, much less. You can compare. Do the quotes uh, and compare with alternatives in the market. You will see, uh, you will be pleasantly surprised again there too, right? So I think I, I fall into um, those 30 minutes, about um, 40 minutes, I guess. I hope I went through uh, everything that would be interesting for you. And now I am open, we are open for Q&A session. Any questions there? Mm. Ah, okay, I see one open question. Uh, just a second, it's a long one I'm reading. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, a person claim says he had 52 sites with 200 cameras uh, and uh, there was a so-called AI, which was actually not machine learning, not real AI, but more based on parameters. 
Yes, we know this. We know uh, many um, providers out there, especially with the embedded systems, with the things that are inside the camera. Camera, unfortunately, cannot allow at the moment. Yes, we are very far advanced in, in hardware, but not so much that uh, camera embedded system will do will provide you the same quality as um, what we say with what we do of course there are edged devices and we also provide them we have this uh, asteria the edge device which is a kind of a small mini pc everything in one so it does this analysis on site and then you get only alerts transferred to centralized website or uh, the cloud or something or your own promise of course we have that too but even for that to to run that you need uh, some embedded let's say relatively powerful analytics graphic cards or something so unless you have that uh, you will still have something kind of primitive of course everything goes to embedded and sooner or later we will be there cameras will have uh, smart and strong enough analytics to provide, uh, to accommodate our models. But at the moment, um, let's say, unfortunately, you will, you are bound to have some additional hardware to analyze that. And uh, in terms of um, true or not true AI, uh, one thing, I will, this is kind of an inner, I would say, information. Our models are trained, let's say, partially by themselves. We implement the model in the training process. So if you like if you research what AI means, it's like they, they, they intel when, when the machine intelligence is in, smart enough to train, when the machine starts to train itself. That's why Skylay is as close to AI as possible, especially compared to alternatives in the market, which uses this buzzword AI just for the fun of it. Well, Skyla is actually implementing the logic when the machine is kind of self-training itself. And that's why it will get better and better with the time, especially it learns on the mistakes much better than anything else. And, uh, and yes, we do roll out every once in a while, major updates, upgrades, et cetera, but also the, your own system will learn from the, the, let's say the possible mistakes and it will get better with the time. And this is one of the most attractive features for, for people to buy and go, and also one of the main reasons you should really go with AI. Because if you buy some solid working thing, okay, it works, and it has its limits, those limits will be hard-coded inside. It will never get better. With AI, there are, let's say, virtually no limits. You get better, 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 and one day it will be, Maybe. In some cases, it is already better than human in a way, because as I show you, it's not that it's smarter, but it can do things faster because it deals with the frames, with numbers, with these ones and zeros immediately. Zooms in in a split of a second. Two, 20 milliseconds is needed for, for uh, something to be zoomed in and verified and alert is sent very fast. Definitely, it's a, yeah. So the question was, is there a machine learning component? It is, it is highly and, and all of it is depends on, on uh, machine learning slash AI. And yes, I do have the right to use that word because as I said, in our, uh, in our flow, the models themselves, they are kind of self-learning. I don't see any open questions. I will. So I think, uh, yeah, anyway, so I, I think I would call, uh, I'll invite you guys, treat this webinar as an invitation, as a sneak peek to um, broader information you may might get 
from our distributors, from our integrators, from our website, as I said, uh, and, and our representatives. Uh, you can get more detailed uh, information on particular product that you are interested in uh, or test it uh, as, as, as soon as you get to the testing, the fun of it, uh, the sooner you will be convinced. No words or video materials can convince you more than, more than that. And, uh, and again, I, what I would call, uh, and this is a kind of a generic advice from, from a site, from a person who is in the field for many, many years. Um, when you see a nice demo uh, in, in shiny operating, a person is taking something, putting it in a bag, in, in a pocket, and it is detected. Bear in your mind, it might be really a selection, a nice selection from everything. When I'm showing you the, the demos and examples, I, I re they are not cherry picked, I promise you. They're just first things that came to me and they are from production site. So something is installed and works there. Works there 24 seven, the client is happy with, with it and it works and well, the client agreed to share this information with, with public. And uh, that's that's what what I've shown you is from real world from real world application. It's not just a lucky chance from a, a development guys or something. So again, my advice is if you are interested in any of the products, get to the at least POC or or testing phase as soon as possible. All of your questions will be answered there. 